Hello, everyone. Today, we're diving into a tutorial series focusing on vulnerable machines called Penetester Lab. Our target for this session is a machine labeled S2-052. To get started, you'll need to grab the vulnerable image from Vulnhub's website. If you're new to Vulnhub, don't worry, you can check out our previous videos in the Vulnhub playlist for a primer. Once you have the image, setting up the virtual machine, VM, in VirtualBox is our next step. Settings up. In this section, we're going to guide you through setting up a new virtual machine, VM, in VirtualBox. Since the file we've downloaded comes in the .iso format, the first step is creating a new VM. Begin by launching VirtualBox. Then, click on New to initiate the creation of a new virtual machine, VM. Here, we'll need to specify the virtual machine name, operating system type, and version. Since we obtained the information from the Vulnhub page, we know that the vulnerable ISO is Linux-based. Click Next to customize the hardware settings by adjusting the RAM and virtual CPU count. Click Next, you'll be prompted to create a new virtual hard disk. This step allows you to allocate storage space according to your requirements. After configuring the disk, click Next to confirm the changes that we did earlier. Finally, click Finish to complete the creation of your VM. Once the VM is created, you'll see it listed in the VirtualBox Manager. Now, let's organize it by grouping it under Penetester Lab. Now, let's configure the settings. Select the VM, click on Settings, and navigate to the Storage Settings. Here, add the ISO image. Now, change the Network Adapter to Host Only Adapter in Network Settings. It's important to ensure that both your Kali Linux machine, which I use it for performing attacks, and the vulnerable machine are connected to the same network. With everything set up, it's time to start the virtual machines. You'll notice that the vulnerable machine is ready, displaying a shell prompt for input. However, our goal is to access it from the Kali machine. Let's dive into the fun. Enumeration Enumeration is the first process of our attack, aimed at identifying the IP address of our target machine using NetDiscover. To do this, open a terminal and run sudo netdiscover-i, and then specify the network interface name, which is eth1. From the scan result, we have obtained our target IP address, which is 192.168.95.4. Next, we move on to conducting a network scan to identify open ports. This step is crucial in understanding the attack surface and planning targeted attacks. We'll utilize the widely used nmap tool for this task. Execute nmap hyphen a followed by the IP address where a hyphen of flag enables a comprehensive scan across all available ports, providing insights into the versions running on each port. After conducting the network scan, we have spotted the presence of one open port. Specifically, the port 80 TCP, which is basically running an HTTP service. This suggests the presence of a vulnerable web application. So let's take a look at the web content running on port 80. To look at the contents ourselves, we can open a web browser of our choice and navigate to the target's IP address in the URL bar at the top of the window. Upon examining the web page, there appears to be a potential vulnerability. Let's utilize the Nikto command line tool to identify it. If you're unfamiliar with Nikto, we've covered it in a previous video. Feel free to check it out for more information. After analyzing the results, we've uncovered a mine content type vulnerability. However, this finding alone doesn't provide much insight. To conduct a more thorough scan and uncover additional vulnerabilities, I'll employ the use of Acunitix. 
To launch the Acunitix dashboard, simply run the command service Acunitix start in your terminal. This will initiate the Acunitix server on port 3443 on localhost. If Acunitix isn't available, alternatives like OpenVAS or Nessus can be utilized. For those interested in installing Acunitix on Kali for free, check out the blog link provided below this video. Once on the Acunitix dashboard page, navigate to Targets and select Add Target to begin scanning. Input the URL of the potential vulnerability and save the target. No further adjustments are necessary, simply click Scan to initiate the process. From here, you can customize the scanning options to your preference. For instance, I've chosen a full scan type. After configuring the options, simply click Create Scan to initiate the scanning process. The scanning process has begun, and you can monitor its progress in the Activity section through the Progress bar. However, as the scanning is consuming considerable time, I'll halt it momentarily. I believe I've already identified the vulnerability. It appears to be the Apache Struts 2 Remote Code Execution, S2-052, vulnerability. Here, you will find out the detailed information regarding this vulnerability, offering further insights. Take a look if you wish to delve deeper. Now that we've identified the vulnerability, it's time to move on to the exploitation step. Exploitation To exploit this vulnerability, we'll utilize the MSF console, which can be easily accessed from the Kali menu. Once opened, you'll find yourself in the MSF6 console. Here, we'll search for the vulnerability S2-052. The search results display six modules tailored to different operating systems. We already know the OS is Linux, but to confirm it, we can use nmap. Here Linux is confirmed. To proceed, execute Use5 to select the Linux module, where the payload will be automatically selected. Next, utilize the Options command to display the required parameters for the attack. Here, we need to provide our host, our port, target URI, L host, L port, and also some cases we have to provide SRV host and SRV port. First, let's set the remote host, our host, to 192.168.95.4. Next, specify the remote port, our port, as port 80. Now, we need to set the target URI. To find this, navigate back to the target web page, click on any of these products, and copy the URI address from the browser's address bar into the console. Moving on, we set the local host, L host, which is crucial for establishing the shell. If you're unsure of your local host IP address, you can find it by running the IP address command in the terminal. In my case, it is 192.168.95.3. There's no need to specify the local port, L port. Now, let's set the server host, SRV host, to the local host IP and the server port, SRV port, to the local port IP. With the configuration complete, we're ready to establish a foothold on the server. Let's proceed. Foothold. Run the exploit command to obtain the shell if it is successful. Upon running the exploit, we encountered an error message, exploit completed but no session was created. Now, let's carefully analyze the options to ensure everything is configured correctly. Upon verification, all settings appear to be in order. It appears to be like, the issue may lie with the payload selected. Let's rectify this by selecting a different payload. Run Show Payloads to view the available payloads for Linux. In this case, I'll choose payload slash Linux slash x86 slash shell slash reverse underscore TCP.
After selecting the new payload, run the options command to ensure all necessary parameters are correctly configured. With everything in order, execute the exploit command once more, and observe the results. Success! It appears the exploit has worked. Finally, we've successfully established a foothold on the server. Confirm this by running the VUMI command to verify if we have root privileges. Indeed, we do have root access. Since we've achieved our objective without encountering any privilege escalation issues, there's no need to proceed further. Let's check if there are any flags in the home directory. Now, let's examine the root directory again. It seems there aren't any flags present. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments section below.